guys, so this is going to be a video about all the recent stuff that's been happening in the world. I usually don't make videos like this, but I feel like, you know, with these platforms and stuff, we should. It don't matter. It doesn't matter what kind of brand you got. You know, uh, you should speak out about this stuff. Like, you should tell your viewers. I mean, granted, everybody don't want to hear this, but, you know, you know this you know what people say all the time, it's my channel, my rules, I do what I want. So, um, basically, let's get into this. Um, so over the last couple of weeks, we've had all these kind of things, just all kind of things happening. So we've had the nine people that were murdered in Charleston, which was horrible. Like, I just don't understand your mindset to think that, hey, I'm going to go in this church, I'm going to ask for the pastor, I'm going to sit beside the pastor. I'm going to sit with these people while they pray. And then I'm going to murder them one by one. And then when you hear about his reasoning behind this stuff, why he hated black people, was because a black dude, uh, his this chick he liked ended up going for black dude or liking a black dude instead of him. And so he felt like, and then he felt like uh, the black man was raping his women and taking over the country. So I'm like, but six of your victims were women. If you felt like the black man was taking over the country, then the majority of your victims should have been black. I'm not saying like, you know, I'm not justifying his actions. I'm just saying his thought process is really warped. Because if you feel like this is the person that is hurting you, then, you know, you would have targeted those people instead of just targeting like some old grandmas in church praying praying for your little bastard soul and that it just hurt my heart like it really hurt my heart and then and then on top of that you have all these people defending him just like saying oh well like you had that that firefighter in texas talking about oh well uh what did he say about them he was like a uh, he should have got praise for what he did uh but then he came back talking about he was talking about somebody that was donating money and not Dylan Roof, um, which I don't, you know, if you, if you're going to make it in that, uh, context, you probably should have specified that in your comment, knowing that you are a city employee and all this other stuff. But, you know, it's just like, it's just crazy to think that all this stuff goes on. And the first thing people like Fox News want to say is that it's not race related. It's, it's not, it's not about race. I don't, I don't see color. I don't, I don't see color, guys. It's about, you know, it's about them being Christians. That's what, it's a, it's a Christian-based war. That's what it is. That's what it is, guys. It has nothing to do about this being one of the oldest black churches in the South. This being a church that has historically had to deal with things like this in the past. Throughout its whole existence. This isn't about how the black church used to be. Uh, the black church was banned in the 1800s, like 1836 or something like that. This isn't about that. This is about them being Christians. This isn't about them being black. We're not gonna we're not gonna call this a hate crime, guys, yet. We don't know. Why we don't know why he did it. Hey Dylan, why did you do it? Well, uh, I hate black people. So, um, that's why I did it did it. Why did you kill the black folks? Because I hate black people. Oh, but Fox News is say all these news. It's just crazy, like, reading the news articles and stuff. It was like, well, we don't know a theory yet as to why he killed that that those members of the congregation. But we do know that he was a really disturbed man. He was so quiet. He, he was just such a well-kept boy. Blah, 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 blah. Yes, use, let's use his elementary school pictures. Or let's use the, the picture that can make him look the most innocent. But meanwhile, this little sucker... Got pictures burning the American flag. He got pictures with all this apartheid uh, symbols on it from South Africa. He got pictures of everything saying he hates. He hates all of everybody. But you still want to just try to picture him. You still want to put him in this perfect little box where all these serial killers, like all these like killers like him get put into. Like the dude from Aurora. Uh, the Colorado, uh, shooting. They put him in this little box while he's disturbed. He's this. He's that. You know. Columbine, those kids were disturbed. Blah, 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 blah. Like, every, every time 
a white person does a mass murder of some sort in America, they're disturbed. They have some kind of mental problem. A black person does it. This little thug just killed all the congregation of the church. This little black bastard did this. Da, 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 da. Like, you have all these headlines demeaning these people as evil, as the definition of evil. But when you think about the definitions and the headlines you see for crimes like this, it's not, it's not that way. It's really not. And then, okay, so then we get into the flag issue. So, the Confederate flag, which is the battle flag for, it was the battle flag for uh, Virginia, I think, something like that. And, you know, you have people that have always used that flag as a symbol of their oppression, as a symbol, uh, as a symbol of oppression for the North, for what they did. And they use it as a symbol of the racism that they feel within themselves. Granted, not everybody does that, like, you know, my husband's family. They used to have the flag up in their house. They used to take little Confederate picture, pictures, you know, like the old-time pictures people would take, like the Western pictures, but like country, super country people would take, like the ones wearing the Confederate uniforms and all that stuff. Like, they did stuff like that. And, you know, I know that they look at that flag as their this is their heritage. This is the people that fought for their family under this flag. But... I also know that they love, they, they will take up for me before anybody else will take up for me. Like, my father-in-law had somebody say something about black people and he was like, not today, not today, Satan. You ain't gonna talk about my, my daughter-in-law. I know that they're not racist, but I know that they look into, they look at the flag in the context of it being a heritage. But what me and my husband talk about at times about this whole situation is that, you know, granted, I know it's your heritage, but. I look at the flag as a symbol of racism. Regardless of who carries it, I look at it like my daddy always used to tell us when we was little, there's this house on the way to Jacksonville. And he was like, if you ever break down, do not go to this house because they had this big old rebel flag outside and you know they don't like no niggas. And I was like, you know, I always took that to heart because I was like, you know, I ain't about to get lynched from no tree because I broke down and I need to go get some help. But I know you, <sighs> it's hard to really just it's hard to kind of just put it into context and think that this is really what these people think that they just really look at it as heritage you know uh that's like me saying oh slavery was my heritage and uh <laughs> let me go get me some slave t-shirts let me go get me some chains to put around my neck let me go get some links like some some handcuffs to put on my hands and walk in a chain game because that was part of my heritage. You know, you can celebrate your heritage, you can celebrate your family and friends, your family that was in these wars and stuff. And you don't, you can celebrate and not be a bigot. That's what you can do. Because people are all like, I look at some of my, fam my, my husband's family members, like his mom and dad, they're fine. I know they, I know they ain't racist. But, you know, everybody, further down the line, you know, I don't know. And, you know, you read these comments and you read these postings and you read what they are constantly putting up on their Facebooks. And it really makes you think, like, do they even like your black ass? Really? Really? Are you just, are you just tolerable? Because you're part of the family now. And, uh, like, I read, I just read some of the stuff and I'm just like, like I said about the heritage thing. I understand this is your heritage, but it's just like Nazis. Uh, if I was a Nazi, if my family was part of Nazis, uh, I probably wouldn't be telling people that in the first place. And I wouldn't be waving their big old flag, be like, hey, let me get me a, a swastika shirt. Be like, oh, get her done. This is my heritage. No, I would not. And it's just so crazy to think that this is the mindset people are really in. Like, they believe that this flag does not represent hate. Granted, one of the biggest hate organizations in, in the United States uses that as their symbol. But they also use the American flag because then people are like, oh, so we should we should we get rid of the flag because that offends you? No. No. This ain't about the flag. This ain't about the, the stars and stripes, boo-boo. 
this ain't about this ain't about no other flag other than that flag a symbol of oppression to a whole people a symbol of what we were worth back in the day the symbol that oh the clan is coming the symbol that jim crow could exist the symbol that we're no better than a piece of damn shit that's what that symbol was and that's what people like my family looked at it as if you go to where i'm from like you see somebody with a uh, confederate flag you ain't looking at them like, oh, that's just their hair, just boo-boo. Just, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Don't worry about it. That's not, it's not fine. And I just don't, I, I don't know. Like, maybe my mind works a little bit differently because, like I tell my husband at times, um, he doesn't understand why. Like, I sometimes I make comments, I was like, oh, that's because they black or something. And sometimes he doesn't understand that because he's white. He's never had to deal with it like that. He's never had to have people just follow him around the stores and stuff because, oh, he's black. The whole heritage theory does not hold up well with me. And let's get into the one that I'm more, well, it's not even more important, but it's just a, an important aspect of whole, this whole situation. So, we have the media. The media is controlled by whoever it's controlled by, and they report what they want to report. But let's think about a couple months ago, in Baltimore, when a CVS burnt down, one CVS burnt down, it was on CNN, MSNBC, it was on Fox News, everybody's news channel, it was on. But, like, I just don't, my, my mind can't comprehend it, really. So, we have seven, eight churches now, I think. Since this morning, I think the last time I saw something on Facebook or on the news about it, like on black news outlets about it, I think it's about eight churches now. Eight churches have been set on fire. Eight predominantly black churches have been set on fire in the United States of America. And we have heard nothing about it. We have heard nothing about it at all. The only time you hear anything about it is on places like The Root places like Facebook, people are sharing these posts or the local news outlets for that county or for that town where it happened. And it's crazy to think that after nine black people in a black church were brutally murdered just just a couple of weeks, just a couple of weeks ago, that now all these churches are getting burnt. And people don't, people don't see, people don't see how that connects. People don't see, oh, those blocks fit together. They don't They don't see it. Or they don't want to report it because they don't want to be like, oh, we're race baiting. We're race baiting, guys. But they will report on the Confederate monuments being uh, vandalized. They will report on the Confederate flag being removed by Brie Newsom, who, you know, kudos to her. Because I couldn't have did it. Not with my job. But, uh... Kudos for her for standing up for what she believed in and doing something about it. Everybody can't be her. Everybody can't do the things that she did. Sometimes I look at these interviews and stuff and I'm like, uh, like I saw this one thing where this white dude was like, so why do they need black churches? Why do they need black colleges? And the lady was like, uh, you do realize that segregation, they weren't allowed to go to white churches and white schools, so they had to build their own. Their own. He was like, you know what? Things are better during segregation. And honestly, I think a lot of people think that. I really do think a lot of people think that. Black and white. Because I, I think a lot of them felt like they were probably safer within their own neighborhoods, within, with their own people, compared to now where they have to intermingle and mix with everybody else. Granted, I don't feel that because uh, if segregation was still around, I couldn't have married my husband. I guess I could have married him. I probably would have got lynched up or put in jail or something. But it's just... It's just really crazy to me. Like, just to think about all the stuff that's going on in America and all the race things and all the, like... It, it's just crazy. It really is crazy. I, And I really wish that we could really do this post-racial... This post-racial thing that uh, everybody's saying that we were supposed to be in because we got a black president and all this stuff. But in reality, it's, never go it's not going to happen. I don't think it'll ever really happen. Not in our lifetime. Maybe in a couple, maybe in a couple of decades, when the whole American race is more like looking like mixed people compared to just like white people, black people, Hispanic people, 
and all the other little races when it's more like a mixture then you probably won't have as much racism that is apparent as it is today because i know people will be like oh well my state ain't racist oh my city ain't racist let me tell you what these places are racist they're polite racist that's what they i've had a call one time the dude told me you can come in my house she can't come in my house and his wife came out there and told me that I couldn't come in his house because I'm a black woman and he don't like black people. And my sergeant at the time told me to stay outside and I'm like, is it domestic? Do got guns in the house, but you want me to come? You want me to stay outside? All right, boss. I right, I'm mindless you. killing all the things that just keep digging a hole for us deeper and deeper as a, as a society. Like... It's just horrible. And then people are all like, black on black crime. Well, like, what about black on black crime? Okay, so this is the thing. So I don't know if people really realize this or not. But you're more you're more likely to be criminalized by someone that looks like you than someone who doesn't look like you. The thing is, with most of these crimes that do occur that are based on different ethnicity, different races uh, against each other, I see you all the time. And you know exactly what's going on. They're like, oh, well, I got robbed. I got robbed at 4 o'clock in the morning, guys. And uh, I really don't know why they even decided to take my crack. Like, can you get it back for me? Oh, my gosh. They didn't give me my drugs. Like, it's always things like that. Not always, but majority of the time, it's stuff like that happening. It's like a drug deal going wrong, something going wrong, where now you're the victim of a crime. Uh, well, now you're the victim of another crime that you were committing because technically you were trying to buy drugs or sell drugs. But now you just got your drugs taken from you. And now you want to cry about it and call us to take a report. And, and I'm not saying that that's the basis of all these crimes that are committed on other races against races. But like I said, the majority of the time, you're likely to be a victim of a crime from someone that looks like you it's just like you're more likely to be assaulted by somebody you know it it's stuff like that like <laughs> it, you can see this is fact can back these things up and like let you see that this is what what really goes on this isn't just me like making up crap this is real life um yeah and then people like <laughs> What? It, it wasn't amusing, but it's just crazy to think that people don't really know anything about a judicial system at all. And I know my job, I learn a little bit, but I'm not like no expert. I ain't no lawyer or nothing like that. But people were up in arms about him getting a bail, a million dollar bail, but that's for the gun charges. That wasn't for, this, this dude ain't getting out of jail for nothing. That was for just gun charges only. People looked at it like, oh, he got a million dollar bond for killing nine people. And then evading police. No, he got a million dollar bond for gun charges. Not not the murders. He didn't get no bond for the murders. He's not getting out of jail. He's not getting out of jail at all. Because I'm pretty sure, regardless of people, what, what people think that might happen with that, I'm, I think that with the way South Carolina kind of pulled together through this whole tragedy, that uh, they're not going to let this boy get out. They're going to try to use insanity. They're going to try to say, oh, he was coerced into it with the people that he was hanging around or the groups that he was in. Oh, I, I really just don't think it's going to work for him. I really think that he's going to be put behind bars and he's probably going to have to be in solitary confinement for the majority of his sentencing, uh, for his uh, majority of his time in prison. Because, you know, if he ever gets around some of these gangs and stuff in jail, it's not going to be good for him. It really is not going to be good for him. And, uh, I really just don't, I just don't see, uh, anything, I just don't see him getting out. I really don't. It's just horrible to think that you can't be safe in church. And the first thing I thought when I heard the whole story come out, I was like, now I'm going to have to take my gun to church. That's ridiculous to think that you need a gun. You need to have your hand on the ready while you sitting there saying a prayer now. Because somebody might walk up on you and shoot you. Like, that's just crazy. It really is crazy. <sighs> mm. 
I guess this is enough for right now to talk about. But I did really want to make a video about this. And I really wanted to get out of the beauty and out of the hair and out of the TTCN and out of all this stuff. And just talk about what's going on.